Good morning. We welcome you all to this Sunday morning worship service. Let's acknowledge God through a word of prayer. Dear loving Father, in whose name we have gathered here, Lord, we thank you and we've come here to glorify your name. Lord, we pray that you forgive our sins and hear us as we worship and call out to your name, Lord. Father, as we find strength and comfort in you lord help us go through the coming days by resting in your presence lord teach us to walk with you and be with us and guard us amen isaiah 40:31 says strength will rise as we wait on the lord we will mount with wings like eagles and we will rise with strength of an eagle and we will run and not grow weary we will walk and not faint my friends wherever you are today whether you are running whether you are walking let's ask god to provide us with strength by resting in his place Our God is such a wonderful God that He saved us from our sins. He retrieves the lost strength. He regains the time. Let's confess through the next song that we believe, because all He asks for us is to believe in Him. I'm 
The Lord, O oh my soul. The entire chapter talks about blessing the Lord, blessing the Lord for His sovereignty, blessing the Lord for His loving kindness, blessing the Lord for His grace and for everything, for His benefits. Isn't it beautiful that we end every prayer this way? Let's end this worship session by singing the last song, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord.
father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear friends i greet you all in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ god has given us another privilege of worshiping him as members of the st thomas garrison church we trust and hope that the lord will grant his presence in our midst and also bless this service worship service in such a way that all those who participate in this will receive god's blessings in abundance let us worship the lord god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it Grace, mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father and and from Jesus Christ the Father's son in truth and love Let everyone who is thirsty come let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift The Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall sing forth your praise Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Let us pray Praise be to you O God the Father who created all things by your power and wisdom and loved the world so as to give your son to be our savior Praise be to you O God the Son who was made human like each and every one of us in all things except sin and was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification Praise be to you O God the Holy Spirit who does lead us into all the truth and has shed abroad the love of God in our hearts All praise and glory be to you O God Father Son and Holy Spirit forever and ever Amen If we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness i will get up and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god has come near repent and believe in good news for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but he we have one who is in who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin let us all humbly confess our sins to the almighty god 
let us all remain in silence and examine ourselves in the presence of God. The prayer of general confession. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done. And we have done those things which we should not have done. And there is no health in us but you, O Lord, have mercy on us, miserable offenders. Spare them, O God, who confess their faults. Restore them that are penitent, according to your promises declared to humankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and just life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The epistle reading for today is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 14. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who are for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Here ends the Bible reading. Praise be to God. Now may we all sing together to the glory of God the, the hymn, This is the day the Lord hath made. This is the day the Lord hath made. Oh 
would like to ask you a question today. Are you thankful to God for something? What do you value most in your life? When I ask you this question, you probably come with a lot of answers, different kinds of answers. What is more valuable to you? Some would say health. For some it is their wealth. For some it is their education and skills. For some it is their power and position. But what is your valuable treasure? Your answer reveals a lot about you and about your heart. It reveals your priorities in life and where your heart is. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So today's message deals with the most valuable treasure that we believers have. We have this treasure. The question is, what is this treasure? I would request you to please turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ our Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Listen very carefully. Verse 7 will be the main verse for us this morning. And we are going to look at three things from this verse. We are going to find answers to three important questions coming out of verse 7. The first question is, what is this treasure? The second question is, what are these jars of clay? And the third question, which comes out of this verse is, what is this all-surpassing power? Three questions, and this morning we are going to find answers to these. Let us bow down and ask God to speak to us today. A loving and living Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, which is living and very powerful. We thank you, Father, for speaking to us today. I pray, Lord, that your word will speak to us loudly and clearly to each and every one listening to this word right now. And I pray that you will open their hearts, prepare their hearts and minds, so that this word will be received by them and will take a hundredfold in their lives. I pray, Lord, that this word will be a blessing to them. And I pray that everyone who listens to this word this morning will give glory and honor to your holy name alone. And may your name alone be glorified and magnified in all the earth. We all give you glory. And in Jesus' name we said, Amen. So today, 
we are going to find answers to these three questions. The first question is, what is this treasure? As we read in this passage, verse 7 says that we have this treasure. But when you read a couple of verses before verse 7, we know what this verse is talking about. What is the treasure which is mentioned? And we find that this treasure is the most expensive and most valuable treasure on the face of earth. The treasure is nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everything exists for his glory. Everything in this world exists for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What does Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 say? Colossians 1 and verse 16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Jesus Christ is supreme. Let us also read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 27. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. For above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. My dearly beloved, this valuable treasure that Paul is talking about in this verse 7 is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the most priceless and valuable thing in this world. How does Matthew describe this treasure in his gospel? Matthew chapter 13 verses 44 to 46. Matthew chapter 13 verses 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. And when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he sold everything that he had and he bought the field in which he had buried this treasure, this valuable treasure. He was willing to give up everything that he had in order to buy, to get this treasure. Verse 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant looking for fine pearls. And he found one of great value. And what did he do? He went away and he sold all that he had because he needed all the money in order to buy that one pearl which was so valuable. My dear brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Savior, is the most valuable thing in this world. You and I can be prepared to give up all that we have in order to just get this particular treasure, this most valuable treasure. Are you willing to give up what you have in order to get this, this most valuable treasure? See what Apostle Paul talks about this treasure when he tells Philippians, 
chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, this is what he says about this treasure. He says, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Dearly beloved, Paul says that he has given up everything that he had and he considers them to be garbage in comparison with this priceless treasure, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We find this treasure stored in jars of clay. What we need to understand is that the jar of clay is not the treasure, but the treasure is inside the jar. The jar is not the treasure, but the real treasure, the most valuable treasure, is inside this jar. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is this treasure. You and I must be willing to pay whatever it is, whatever the price it is, in order to secure this gospel in our lives. This good news of Jesus Christ, the salvation into our lives. You and I have so much of this power inside of us, the blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ inside of us, that you, can I, you and I can share this gospel, the good news of this gospel to many people as many as possible. You can give and give. You can freely share what you have freely received. You may freely give. And even when you give to so many people, this does not get exhausted. My dear brother, my dear sister, the treasure keeps increasing inside of you. It keeps rising inside of you. There is a stream, there is a stream of living waters flowing from inside of you, and that is the anointing of the Holy Spirit which Jesus Christ has given you. When you have received the gospel of the Lord Savior Jesus Christ, He has anointed you with His Holy Spirit, and that is inside of you. It will never get exhausted. You can share with a thousand people. It will not get exhausted, my dear brother, my dear sister. So we know now the answer to the first question, and that is, Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the real treasure. Which now gets on to the second question, as to what are these jars of clay? When you look back at our main verse, verse 7, in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, we find that the jar of clay is referring to us. Paul is referring to us. We are called jars of clay. You see, jars of clay are fragile. They are weak. They are easily broken. They do not look good. But it is only in jars of clay that the most preci precious treasures are kept safe. You know, it was customary in the ancient times, in the Bible times, for the Jews to keep all their precious gold and silver in earthen pots and hide them so that nobody will be able to steal it away. In fact, even the Dead Sea Scrolls, which I'm sure you must have heard of, were scrolls on which the word of God was written in the original Hebrew, was all rolled in scrolls and safely kept in jars of clay. And these jars of clay were hidden in caves in a place called Qumran. Probably when Israel was being attacked by the Romans and when they raised 
Jerusalem to the ground completely, the Jews must have secured it by putting this treasure, the Word of God, the original Word of God written in these parchments, in these jars of clay. Even now, if you would go to some of the museums in UK and in the US, you will find this treasure. This treasure, the Word of God written in Hebrew, stored in jars of clay. So jars of clay have all along been used to store something inside of them which is very precious. Though the jar themselves are fragile and useless. Isaiah in 64, chapter 64 and verse 8 says, We are the clay, you are the potter, and we are the work of your hand. You see, God has formed us. He has shaped us. He has put whatever is required to make us to look like this jar of clay. He is the master potter. And God did not create you and me to be this jar of clay, to be kept on display on a shelf in a museum. He wanted you and I to be this jar of clay, a simple old ugly looking jar of clay, maybe cracked here and there, maybe chipped off here and there, but he wanted this jar of clay to be useful in his kingdom. Are you and I useful in his kingdom? Or are we putting ourselves on this shelf on display? God has filled us with his Holy Spirit and he has anointed us by giving us the spirits, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit seen in us, must be seen by the people around us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that he has blessed us with, anointed us with, kept inside of us, must be useful to strengthen and edify the church and this world. That is the purpose why he has created you and me as jars of clay and he has put his spirit in two of us. He has filled us and anointed us, anointed us so that you and I can be a blessing, useful in his kingdom. He doesn't want to see you and I on the shelf on display. Let me explain this to you. You know, there was once a, the most expensive violin it was almost 270 years old, the most famous violin, and it costed about 16 million US dollars. And this was donated to one of the leading musicians, and she happened to play this in a concert, a piece, say for about three to four minutes. She played a beautiful piece on this violin, and the violin made excellent music. It was so good to hear. And after that, the violin was kept on display on the stage and the crowd, the massive crowd, was pressing under to, to the stage to come and have a look at this priceless violin, the most expensive one, 16 million US dollars. And they appreciated and they said, Oh, what a beautiful violin, what a good sound it gives, how beautiful the music is. And they were all in appreciation of this violin. And after that, they called another person. He was a gypsy. And this man, he brought an instrument made of coconut shells and a bamboo stick resembling a violin. It was looking like an instrument. And people were thinking, what is he going to do? And he started playing music, wonderful music. Everybody's jaws were dropping and they were listening to this wonderful music that he had produced just out of this coconut shells and the bamboo stick. And after his three minutes or four minutes of his rendition of the music was done, 
This coconut instrument made of coconut shells and bamboo was also kept on display and this man was on the stage. The crowd again, once again, thronged to the stage. But you know what? They didn't go to look at the coconut shell and the bamboo, that instrument, but they came to appreciate and congratulate this gypsy who had made this wonderful music with using nothing but coconut shells and a piece of bamboo. My dear friends, I hope you get the message. God wants you and I, the jar of clay, to hold on this precious anointing which he has put inside of you so that that pressure which is inside of us will be glorified and magnified. He doesn't want you and I to beautify ourselves, to beautify the exteriors of these jars of clay so that you and I can remain on display on a shelf and attract the attention of people. I can stand here this today, dressed in a three-piece suit or a two-piece suit, sharing the word of God. But am I at attracting the attention to me? Or am I attracting the attention to the living word of God which is being preached and to the attention of the anointing which Christ has put into each of us? Am I gathering degrees behind my name, as many as there are in a thermometer, doctorates in theology, to attract the attention, to gain reputation from among people, saying, I am a doctorate in theology, or am I attracting attention to the Word of God, to the anointing that He has kept inside of me? Let us be careful. Let us not display ourselves. Let us not attract the world to us, because that will give us pride. We all remember the story, what happened to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 4. I want you to read these verses with me. Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 to 33. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. The king spake, and he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? And while the word was still on the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive you away from men, and you will live with the beasts of the field, to eat the grass like oxen. And this is what he happened to Nebuchadnezzar because of his pride. God hates the pride. God hates pride which is in us. God hates the proud people, but he loves and gives grace to those who are humble. Do not attract attention to yourself. Let us not attract attention to these jars of clay, but let us attract attention to what is inside the jar of clay, the treasure which is inside. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 31, God shows us, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and despised the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. So that no one may boast before him. Please underline this verse 29. He doesn't want any one of us to boast before him. And verse 31, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. If you and I were to boast of something, we need to boast about this pressure which is inside of us. My dear people of God, if you are a child of God, then God has a job for you. He doesn't want you to see you on the shelf. 
He wants you to be useful to the kingdom. As you seek after God and ask Him to best understand the purpose for which He has sent you in this world, you will begin to notice something. You will notice that God is calling you to do something beyond your abilities and capabilities. Things that are impossible for us to do, to accomplish without Him. Things that are impossible for me to accomplish without Him. It is not impossible because I am not qualified. It is not impossible. I am not qualified, I am not gifted, I am not talented. I don't have proper training, I am not smart. I'm not outgoing enough, I'm not a good enough speaker, and these are some of the many excuses that we will come out when God is wanting us to do something. And we also tell God, don't you know, Lord, that I am weak, I am flawed, I am a jar of clay with a crack on it, a piece has already chipped off, I'm useless, I'm not talented like those people. Why don't you ask them, Lord, they will do a better job. But my dear brother and sister, let me tell you, God chooses the weak and the flawed. For example, one of the most famous men in the Bible, Moses in the Old Testament, God calls him and gives him a very important task. He says, go and speak to Pharaoh in Egypt and bring all my people out of bondage, out of slavery, into the promised land. And what Moses said in Exodus chapter 4 and verses 10 to 13, he says, Lord, pardon your servant. I have not been eloquent, neither in the past nor now that you have spoken to me. I am slow of speech and tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will help you speak, and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send somebody else. See, Moses was basically telling God, I'm a weak jar of clay. I have a crack. I have some pieces shipped off this. I'm not worthy. I'm not capable. I cannot do what you want me to do. This is something big that you are expecting from me. But God uses such people who are humble, who are weak and broken to do something mighty. And God used Moses to deliver his people from the clutches of Pharaoh and brought them out of Egypt into the promised land. There's one more example I would like to tell you in the Bible about Samuel, the prophet. God sends him to anoint a new king, and when he comes there, Samuel meets somebody who is strong and handsome and has the bearing of a leader on the outside. And he looks at all these things and he says, Oh, this must be the one that God has in mind. But God tells him, God speaks to Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 6, he says, Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Instead, God chooses the youngest and the weakest of all the brothers, David. And he tells Samuel to anoint him as king. And God testifies about David in Acts chapter 13 and verse 22 like this. After removing Saul, God made David their king. And he testified concerning David like this. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do anything I want him to do. Please underline this, my dear brothers and sisters. A man after my own heart, and he will do everything I want him to do. God has been speaking to you, my brother. God has been speaking to you, my dear sister. 
and he has been asking you to do something for him in his kingdom but we have been saying no we have not been listening to him do you want to be like david do you want god to testify that you and i are people after his own heart who are willing to do anything and everything whatever he commands us to do wherever he leads us be assured that he is with us let us give up and ask him to lead us because these jars of clay as we are on this world created by him are unworthy but the treasure inside of us is the most important one so we have now come to the end of the second question the answer and we have found that for first question the treasure is jesus christ the real treasure the second one the what are the jars of clay we have seen that we human beings are the jars of clay shaped and formed by jesus christ now this comes to the last question of the day and that is what is this surpassing power what is this surpassing power from where does this come and why what is the purpose of this power being displayed and where does it come from if you and i will go back to the same main verse verse number 7 we find that this power is the power of god this all surpassing power is the power of god and the purpose for this power to be made evident is that the world to know everyone in the world to know and see the power of god on display god wants his power to be displayed so that the whole world may know that he is the only omnipotent god the omniscient god the omnipotent god a god who is all powerful god's power is immense he is an all powerful god almighty god el shaddai let's take the example of gideon a perfect example from the bible you know when god calls gideon to lead an attack against the enemies of israel they are a very very strong enemy a powerful enemy and they had a very big and large army but god tells gideon and he says come on go and wage a war against them in judges chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 the lord turned to gideon and said go in the strength you have and save israel out of midian's hand am i not sending you and gideon said pardon me lord but how can i save israel my clan is the weakest in manasseh and i am the least in the family god why are you asking me can't you see that i am a nobody i'm just a plain weak jar of clay with a crack on it how can i be doing something like this something so powerful as you're saying god convinces gideon to do what he had asked him to do and he says gideon go prepare an army and gideon goes about and prepares an army which is 32000 strong 32000 strong so gideon prepared this army he trained 32000 men of war soldiers for battle and god looked at him and he said no this is too big a number god did not want him to take 32000 people because if these people go to battle and get the victory then the credit goes to them and god's name will not be glorified so he looked at gideon and he said come on reduce the number 32000 is too many and he brought it down to 300 people just 300 soldiers and gideon led these 300 men of war to battle and guess what happened these 300 people won the battle but the victory the glory went to the one living god no one praised these 300 people but everyone praised the living god and thanked him because his power was displayed this is exactly what god wants to do in you and me he doesn't want to glorify this jar of clay please don't keep looking at getting importance to this jar of clay but please elevate and glorify 
what is inside of you and that is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you closely look at how Jesus even chose his 12 disciples, you will find that he chose them out of ordinary background. People like fishermen, ordinary people like me and you. He did not choose people high up in the society from the ruling class or maybe very well educated people. He never did that. Ordinary jars of clay. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, the Lord says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. You might feel that you are a weak jar of clay, but God tells you, My grace is sufficient for you, my son. My grace is sufficient for you, my daughter. And he will make perfect our weakness by making, giving us strength in the time to come. So the power is from God. The all-surpassing power is from God. So the answer to the three questions that we have seen this morning are, what is the treasure? The treasure is Jesus Christ, the gospel, the most valuable treasure on the face of earth. The second question is, what are these jars of clay? We, you and I, are the jars of clay. We are weak. Yes, we are weak. Maybe you the crack, but we are these jars of clay. And the precious, most precious treasure and the anointing is kept safe in these jars of clay. And the answer to the third question, what is this surpassing, all surpassing power? We see it is the power of God which is made evident in our weakness because he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know that God has formed us, right? He is the potter and we are the clay. Jeremiah the prophet says, even before the world began, or even before he was formed in his mother's womb, God knew him. God foreknows us. He has predestined us. In fact, he has a master plan of everything that is to come. His eyes have seen our unformed substance and his hands has shaped us. And Jeremiah the prophet once again says, even before I came out of my mother's belly, he had appointed me, he had consecrated me to be a prophet to the nations. My dear brother and sister, before you and I were born, before you and I have entered this world, God had a plan and purpose for us. A plan and purpose as to how this jar of clay must be put to use. He doesn't want you and me, jars of clay, to be made decorative with all other things and put on display on a shelf. But he wants you and I to be useful for the kingdom. You and I to be useful to the kingdom in the ways that he has planned. If he's asking you to do something, please go ahead and do it. You may feel weak, but break down and ask him for his power and his strength. And he is with you. If you are a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, your jar is full of this treasure. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. The gospel of Christ is a treasure which is in your life. And you must be willing to lay down everything in your life for the sake of this gospel. However, if there is someone here who is not a believer, somebody listening to this message, who is not a believer and not a follower of Jesus Christ, then your jar of clay is empty, my friend. I'm willing to share the joy. I'm willing to share this treasure of Jesus Christ with this inside of me with you today. I'm willing to share this treasure to you. And all you need to do is cry out to the Lord. Cry out to him. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask him for his forgiveness. Surrender your life to him today. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ and allow him to fill your heart with this treasure. If you're earnestly seeking him today, he will fill you with this treasure. He will anoint you with the Holy Spirit and he will make you strong. 
he will be able to make you useful for the kingdom. May the world not see and admire and praise this ordinary cracked jar of clay, but instead let us draw the attention in this world to the treasure which is inside of us, the gospel of Jesus Christ and his anointing. May the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be clearly seen in our lives, wherever we go and whatever we do. May God's name be glorified and magnified. Let us bow down and ask God to change us today and to fill us today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, today. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us loud and clear. We are jars of clay. You have formed us, Lord, with your hands, because you are the potter and we are the clay. And you have anointed us with your Holy Spirit, blessed us for one purpose, O oh Lord, to glorify your name. Help us, Lord. Help each and every one listening to this message today to ask you, to come before you, to kneel before you, to cry out before you and ask you, Lord, what should I do, Lord? What do you want me to do? What do you expect me to do? And Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak to each and every person. Lead them, O Heavenly Father, as you commanded Moses, as you commanded your people in the Word of God, I pray that each and every one of us here today listening to this word will be guided by you, Lord, so that we will bring glory and honor to thy name. Father, I also pray for the others who are listening to you and who have received you today as the Lord of their lives. I pray, Lord, as they have cried unto you, listen to them, O oh Father, and I pray that you will give them salvation which comes from you alone because you have died on the cross of Calvary for their sins also, Lord. I pray that you will anoint them, that you will fill them with the Holy Spirit, and Lord, that all of us together in this world will glorify you alone, that we will not attract the attention of this world to these useless, weak jars of clay. Help us to understand this, O Lord, and let us not be jars, beautifying ourselves, being kept for display, but let us be put to use in your kingdom, O oh Father. Lord, help us to glorify you alone, that in all that we do, wherever we go, help us to glorify you and you alone. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Now may we spend, may we all join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us at our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen let's pray the collect for peace O god who is the author of peace and lover of concord in whose knowledge our eternal life stands whose service is perfect freedom Defend us, your humble servants, from all assaults of evil, that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversities. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the Talek for grace, O Lord, a refuge, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by, by your gov governance to do always that which is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The collect for aid against all perils. Lighten our darkness, we ask you, O Lord, and by your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this day. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us all join together in, in the general thanksgiving prayer. God of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us. And to all people, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all blessings of this life. But above all, for your boundless love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, by the means of grace, and for the hope of the glory. And we ask you, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Unto God's most gracious mercy and protection be commit all of us this moment. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Now may we sing together the song, Jesus shall reign, Jesus shall reign.
The Lord be with you. With thy spirit, let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen.